Hello and welcome to Autobot YouTube channel. My name is Rahul Nagarshan. Today we are going to learn how we can install GitLab runners in our machine and what is the use of GitLab runner and how we can use it in our automations. Right. So let us understand what is uh, a GitLab uh, runner and uh, how we can configure that in our uh, CI/CD. So GitLab runner is a lightweight agent. the runs ci jobs and sends the result back to gitlab so it's nothing but it's an agent that we can install in our machine or we can install in any linux windows or uh, in, even in a docker or even in a kubernetes and it will help to make a connection between our gitlab instance and it will communicate each other to run our particular ci cd jobs so it's a component of gitlab ci cd which is a built in continuous integration and continuous deployment tool within gitlab Okay, so GitLab Runner allows you to automate the testing and deployment of your code by executing job defined in your uh, GitLab CI/CD configuration. So uh, it is nothing but like once you make the registration with the GitLab, there will be a configuration file. In that a config dot toml file, you can make additional settings as well. Uh, also, we have the GitLab CI dot yaml file. In that you can create tags like uh, <coughs> you need to mention which job need to be triggered by uh, which. Uh, Uh, which gitlab runner so that uh, configuration you can make in your dot uh, gitlab ca dot yaml file and let us understand how it is going to work so when you push the code to gitlab repository gitlab ca cd picks up the changes and triggers a pipeline so as you know like we'll be keeping a dot gitlab ca dot yaml file and inside that we'll be using tags to configure the respective uh, runners so while doing the registration of the runners itself we will be providing the tags okay so that tag we have to provide in the gitlab ci dot yaml so whenever if we push uh, or if we make a commit uh, to a repository the particular job will execute so which runner will execute means that tag we have to configure in the dot gitlab ci dot yaml based on that it will make a connection to that particular uh, gitlab runner and it will execute a particular job So GitLab runner then fetches the job from GitLab, executes it on a separate machine called a runner. Okay, we call it like a runner machine and reports the result back to uh, uh, GitLab. So just consider in that particular machine, uh, it may execute a particular job and uh, it will generate a report. Right? Uh, if it is a unit test, it will generate a uh, J unit or report. So that uh, report need to be added to uh, uh, the pipeline like an artifact. So that's how we can get the reports from that particular runner instance. So GitLab runner can be installed on various platforms, including Linux, Mac OS, and uh, Windows, and it also uh, supports a different execution environment like a uh, Docker containers or Kubernetes clusters as well. Okay, so this is one biggest advantage. Like you can either run the GitLab runner as a Docker container, or even you can uh, run it in a Kubernetes environment as well. Okay, so let's go to uh, our project, and I will show you uh, how you can. uh make a configuration uh and how you can register that okay so i'm going to use my windows machine for uh, doing this uh, uh, see, uh, runner registration so let me go here okay so what you have to do is just go to your project okay so uh, this runners can be configured in two ways either you can uh, do it in a uh group level or either you can do it in a project level okay so i'm just going to show you how you can configure to uh, project level Level okay, so this is my project GitLab hyphen demo hyphen project, and what you have to do is just go to settings, just go to CI/CD, okay, and just go here. Okay, runners, runners are process that pick up and execute CI/CD jobs for uh, GitLab. So if you want to know more about uh, GitLab, you just need to click on this link, and it will give you more documentation regarding GitLab runners. So let me expand this. Okay, uh, so here one important thing is like uh, to uh, one project or to any group level, you can configure many number of uh, uh, runners. There is no limit for that, and uh, uh, there there will be uh, two status like either it can be uh, active, available to run jobs, or it can be post not available to run jobs. It means if if already uh, running a particular job, you cannot use the same runner for another job, right? And if it is active, means uh, it can take that particular. Uh, Uh, runner to execute a particular job. Okay, so because of some uh, configuration issues and all, sometimes uh, our uh, uh, runners will go or offline, or it can go to post status as well. Okay, tags control which type of jobs uh, a runner can handle. As I mentioned, uh, there is a provision in uh, GitLab CI dot YAML file in which you can 
uh, provide the uh, uh, tags okay it's not only gitlab ca.yaml file in the jobs that you're creating there is a tag feature so in that tag you have to provide the tag of the runner that you're configuring okay so based on that that particular job will pick up the particular uh, runner and it will execute that job okay by tagging a runner you make sure runners only handle the jobs they are equipped to run okay so how you can do the registration so one method is like you can get the registration token so if i click on this usually it should give the registration token but here it is showing like creating runners with the runner registration token is disabled so how you can enable that so for that what we have to do is just go to group level so this is my group level just go to cacd okay let me go to runners and here there is a provision like allow members of projects and groups to create runner with the runner registration token okay so I'm just granting this permission so it means like uh, uh like uh like just consider if uh, a person who is having access to the particular project or to the group they can make a configuration to any of the runners okay so i just enabled that okay and there is one more feature called enable instance runner for this group. so enable instance runners for all projects and subgroups in this group so it will uh, because of that only we are able to see all the instance runners okay so if we disable that then we won't be able to see any of these runners so these runners are nothing but like uh, uh, some predefined runners that is already configured in the club, which you can use for executing your uh, uh, jobs okay so you don't need to make any particular configuration for that you can see many runners are those which are online as well as a few are there in offline status okay so if you are in offline status and if you scroll down you will be able to see if you want to disable the group runner for this particular project that is also available just click on disable group runners okay so now let me refresh this page okay let me go to runners let me go here yeah now i am getting the registration token okay so if you want to get the details like how you can make the registration you just need to click here it will give you the details like how to do the registration okay so as i'm going to do the registration in a windows machine i already opened the documentation for that okay so let me show you how to do it yeah so this is just for uh, uh, uh registering as well as uh, running a uh, gitlab runner in your windows machine so first we have to create a gitlab hyphen runner uh, folder so let me copy this name let me go to my c drive okay i already have a gitlab uh, folder so let me do one thing let me delete everything okay i think it's already running that's why so let me do one thing okay I just to stop the runner Okay, now I stop the uh, GitLab one. So let me try to delete again. <laughs> yeah, now it has uh, deleted. Right? So you cannot uh, remove a GitLab right now if it is in running status. So I just uh, remove it after stop. So now what I am going to do is I already have the folder GitLab runner in my machine. If you don't have this, just create a uh, GitLab runner folder. Okay, then after that, what you have to do is just based on your configuration, you have to download the exe for the particular runner. Okay. So let me download the 64 bit. So let me close that particular uh, folder. Okay, I'm going to save it all. Okay. So it is downloading the GitLab runner. So let us understand what is the next step. So there should be a write permission in that particular uh, folder. 
okay then next step is like we have to do the registration registration of the uh, runner so let it complete the downloading okay so i can see the downloading is completed so what i'm going to do is let me go here and this is the exe that has downloaded my exe uh, so let me do one thing let me rename this dot uh, exe file to gitlab hyphen runner okay that's it okay now what we have to do is we have done uh, till this part like we have the right permission now this uh, next part is we have to do the registration right so we have the binary install so now we have to make a registration from the particular runner to uh, the gitlab instead right so how we can do that that's what we are going to do so for that uh, uh, let us click over this particular hyperlink then it will open up this particular window so here you can see how you need to make the configuration for with uh, different uh, uh, instances or different uh, operating system right so if you're going to use linux how you need to do the registration as i have i have taken uh windows i need to follow these particular steps but the steps are almost uh, the same okay so now what i'm going to do is let me copy this uh, step gitlab uh, runner register so we are already inside the particular folder so let me run this gitlab runner register okay so if you do that it will ask for the gitlab instance you are okay so what i'm going to do is let me go here okay so let me open this okay here it is uh, showing the url okay so this is the url that i have to use i just copied the url okay and what is the registration token registration token uh, let me close it or either you can take it from here okay here, here you can see the registration token so let me copy from here okay so this is the registration token uh, and you can add a description for the runner this is a demo runner okay i'm just giving some description and this tag is very important okay so this tag you have to use in your jobs to make the execution like right? just consider you have some 10 uh, in uh, 10 runners that are running and uh, make a registration to your gitlab instance your job need to understand which instance or which runner need to trigger your job right for that you can use the tags so let me keep it like runner one okay so this is one method and i will show you in next video like how you can use this runner for uh, executing your uh, jobs okay so i'm just adding one tag as a runner one comma and uh, let me put it like a uh, auto one okay auto voter one okay that's right if you have any maintenance route you can add that i am just keeping okay that's it and here <coughs> uh, at the end it will ask like what should be the executor okay uh, so i have used uh, uh, um, windows as the machine right i'm just going to use help okay yeah okay so that's it so now here you can see configuration was saved in this particular uh, toml file Okay, so this is the configuration file which is generated uh, in which you can see all the configuration related to the function between GitLab runner to GitLab instance. So let me go to this folder and uh, I will show you the configuration file. Okay, so this is the configuration file it has generated. So there are a lot of uh, advanced settings that uh, you can do in this particular GitLab runner configuration. Okay, so that is already available in. Uh, that is already available in the GitLab documentation. Like there are a lot of things like uh, uh, which user can, uh, uh, which user need to use uh, to execute the runner. Because in some cases there can be scenarios like the root user cannot access uh, 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 any of the job for execution. Right? So there you can set the user level. Like what would be the maximum role for that particular uh, uh, runner. So all those configuration you can set it out in the config.toml file. Okay. Uh, that's it and uh, let me go back here and uh, let me see whether any registration has happened or not okay so let me refresh this okay let me go here and see 
Yes. So here you can see there is a runner currently configured and these are the tags that I provided like auto boot one and runner one and this is a demo runner. Right. But uh, still the status is runner has never contacted this uh, instance. Okay. So what I'm going to do is let me uh, start this uh, instance. So once uh, install GitLab runner as a service. So either you can use the default uh, uh, user or you, you can provide your own uh, user details like your username and password to run the particular GitLab runner as a service. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to install and uh, just start it. Just copy this. Service already exists. Okay, so let me start it. Okay, now it has started. So let me go here and see whether it has a total or not. Yeah, now you can see the service is online or active and now you can use this particular runner to execute your jobs, GitLab job. Okay, so this is how you need to configure your GitLab runner with your GitLab instance to run your jobs. Okay. Uh, so I hope you are clear about this configuration and registration. If there is any doubts regarding this, please do comment in the comment section. Okay. So the configuration is almost same for other operating systems as well. But here I just showed you how to do the configuration for uh, Windows machine. Okay. So the proper documentation is already available and provided by GitLab. So you can just refer that to uh, uh, do this uh, configuration. Okay. So in the coming videos, I will show you how to use this particular runner to execute your job. Okay, uh, so that's it. Uh, thanks for watching this uh, video. So, um, I'll be coming up with more number of videos later to this lab and I will show you how you can use this particular lab runner for uh, executing your job. And we are going to cover more advanced topics related to uh, lab pipelining. Uh, so, all the things will be coming up in the uh, coming videos. Okay. So, thanks for watching the video. Uh, thanks for your support. Bye.